people's first reaction is, hey, go on LinkedIn because that's, you know, kind of the social media for business. LinkedIn, you get bombarded in so right. many ways by so many sales pitches. So how do you differentiate from that? Just by finding out your target demographic, you're going to start noticing certain pain points. And if you have a good product and you have a specific demographic that you're reaching out to, you will find what their pain points are. Then you go ahead and address those pain points and how you're going to solve that problem. Then when someone sees that message, it's, hey, I know you have this problem. Here's how I can solve it. Someone's more likely to say, let's have a discussion. How can this work for me? What is up, Action Taker? Welcome back to After Hours Entrepreneur, your guide to the first six-figure year of your business. I am your host, Mark Savant, and today we're coming to you live from South Florida, the Levon Center at NSU Nova Southeastern University here in Davie, Southeast Florida. This recording took place during the Space Day event here, which is a merging of private and public all coming together to innovate around the science and business of space. And one of the things that I think is really important as entrepreneurs is that we're always looking to the skies, both figuratively and literally, because innovation, my friends, is where all the gains are going to come from. So in this episode and this series of episodes, you're going to be hearing from students, entrepreneurs, business folks, people in government, and we're going to be sharing all the ways that you can leverage the industry of space to grow your business and grow your income. With all that said, let's get into this fresh episode here of the After Hours Entrepreneur, which is provided to you by podcast production agency, Mark Savant Media. You can go to www.marksavantmedia.com to launch your profitable podcast today. All right, let's get into the episode. Yo, Tarek, what's up? All right, Mark. Thanks for uh, having me over here. It's a really exciting event here at Space Day, the first ever Space Day. So I saw you're doing a podcast and said, hey, I got to be part of this and love your setup here and, you know, just hoping to have a really great day. Yeah, appreciate it. Space Day. It's pretty exciting, right? It's like the new future of entrepreneurship. Pretty awesome. Yeah, it really is. You know, um, personally, I'm, I've been in sales for 17 years, uh, a lot of B2B sales. Um, I've been in financial sales for the last seven years. And I started a company, the Outsource Sales House, basically as a company that businesses can outsource some or all of their sales to a company like mine. Uh, I've been really attracted to the technology industry, the STEM industries, if you will. Um, and there's a lot of excitement going on down here in South Florida, especially in areas like the Space Coast, um, with more commercial space, aviation and aerospace uh, businesses coming down here, um, you know, generated by a lot of the, you know, uh, missions to outer space like SpaceX and things like that. And uh, I see a lot of great things happening out here. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, just announced that, you know, all the innovation that's happening here at the Levan Center and, you know, who knows what the future holds? Bold prediction. How soon, how soon are we traveling to Mars? Well, my son seems to think that we're traveling to Mars in the next five to ten years. He's only five years old, so he's already got his <laughs> spacesuit ready to go. So, uh, But realistically, hey, in the next five to ten years, we could actually be taking trips to outer space. If you had the opportunity to travel mar to Mars, would you go, Tariq? I don't think so. <laughs> um, only if there was a return ticket, but that's not going to happen. So I don't think so. That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. Not, not for me. So let's talk about sales a little bit. Sales has kind of evolved a bit, right? I remember growing up, sales was going door to door, knocking. It was cold calling people. Mm -hmm. what, what do you think the next evolution in sales looks like? You know, sales is definitely evolving to more automation. Um, there's a lot more tools that sales agencies or sales campaigns can utilize now, especially with online marketing, um, email, text message, uh, even just automating with the responses that go out to uh, potential clients, potential prospects. Um, so definitely a lot more innovation uh, on the side of sales. So it's not just someone knocking on doors or, or making a cold call. Uh, nowadays, there's no such thing as a cold call anymore, actually. It's always a, a warm call, but it's based on actual data, analyzing responses, and figuring out when to reach certain people and how to reach certain people. Mm. So definitely a lot more tools out there. And uh, for, for someone, especially in a tech industry, as we were talking about before the uh, podcast, Mark, 
you know, a lot of tech companies are great at developing their technology. They're great at writing code. They're great at software development or whatever else that they're, they're specialized in, but they may not have a sales background and it's difficult to start generating revenue, whether it's, you know, organically with sales or raising capital or whatever it might be. But if you have a great product, as great of a product as you have, if you don't have any sales, you have nothing. Yeah. And that's really what I'm here for. And I, personally, I, I got my MBA here at Nova Southeastern University when I saw this event here uh, to come back to the campus and just see what's going on with, with this Levan Center of um, Innovation. It's, it's really amazing, and I definitely want to be a part of it and to help out other businesses here in our area uh, succeed is, is, would be just a dream come true. Love it. So I want to talk practical about sales, right? Because that's what the After Hours Entrepreneurs want to know is how can I actually make some money? How can I actually get some sales? And I know what everyone's thinking. The best thing to do is probably just go on to LinkedIn, send a huge wall of text, buy my stuff, right? I found that that doesn't normally work. So if you, Tariq, were today going to try to make some money, make a sale, where would you start? Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. A lot of um, people's first reaction is, hey, go on LinkedIn because that's, you know, kind of the social media for business. Um, and, and there is some truth to that, to reaching out to certain people. But to be honest with you, you know, LinkedIn, you get so many, you get bombarded in so right. many ways by so many sales pitches. So how do you differentiate from that? So what you really have to do is find out a little bit more about your, you really have to define the target market, right? So narrow down that list and then really differentiate your product by the, the benefits of your product rather mm -hmm. than just the features of your product. So when you go to someone and you're just saying, hey, I have all these, I have this software and it has all these features and it does this and that, people don't really care about that. So you got to really find out what they're, just by finding out your target demographic, you're going to start noticing certain pain points mm -hmm. that they all experience. And if you have a good product and you have a specific demographic that you're reaching out to, you will find what their pain points are then you go ahead and address those pain points and how you're going to solve that problem. Then when someone sees that message, it's not, hey, I have this product and here's the price and, you know, buy it. It's, hey, I know you have this problem. Here's how I could solve it. Someone's more likely to say, okay, how can I, let's have a discussion. How, how, can, this, how can this work for me? Yep. When do you like to bring up price? Do you like to talk about money at the beginning, the middle, or the end of the pitch? It's got to be after you've built up some value. If you go ahead and start saying, hey, here's our product, here's what it costs, then, then you're on the back foot trying to justify why your product, why someone should pay that amount for your product. Mm. So it's after you've built up, first establish that there's a definite need. Kind of like the whole, hey, sell me your pen thing. Well, if you don't need a pen, you're not buying a pen. <laughs> so you got to first establish that there's a definite need, establish the pain points, make sure they understand that your product solves that pain, Here's the price, but then justify the price by how much money they're actually losing by not using your product. Yeah. Right. So then in their minds, they're saying, well, hey, I'm spending 10 grand a month. I'm losing 10 grand a month, you know, because I don't have this product right now. This product costs me 2,500 bucks. Hey, I'm netting 7,500, you know, and, and then they start doing the math. Right. So once you've justified the product, right, and the benefits solved a problem, then the pricing should pay for itself. Love That's it. my strategy. It, it reminds me a lot of Alex Hormozzi's $100 million offer, right? Making an offer so good that they can't refuse. And a lot of that, like you said, comes off the back of what most entrepreneurs want, most businesses want, is to generate profit, generate more money. What is the most underrated sales channel that people aren't using? Hmm, that is a good question. The most underrated sales channel. Is it calling mom? Hey, mom, buy my thing. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't know. You know. I'm not sure how to answer that because I think it's, it's, it's a, it could be a combination of different things because you, here's, the, here's the problem that most sales organizations come across is that they, there's avenues to get to certain people that they didn't know about, right? So whether it's, okay, having a certain email campaign with it within certain with, with certain sequences built in, right? To try to reach certain people at certain times based on their responses or based on who actually opened that email, or 
what when someone actually opened an email or what they may have clicked on. So I think I don't know if there's an actual channel per se. I think it's just not knowing what's out there. Mm. I think that's a little bit more what people are coming across. Gotcha. Right? Whether it's a specific text message automated campaign that reaches certain people at certain times um, in the day, maybe. You know, there's certain features that people don't know about. I think that's 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 where it's being missed. Dig it. Dig it. Not a, not a simple question. Know, I, I agree with you. I don't think there's just one one switch that you can flip. And all of a sudden, the sales start coming through. I exactly, think yeah. there's a lot of trial and error, I think, too. And, under, and I think, like you said, defining your target market. Oh, right. Defining the target market is definitely the first place to start. Yeah. Right. Especially for tech companies, figure out, all right, where do they stand within the market? All right. You may have a certain type of program, but do you go after, you know, the A plus, you know, big businesses? Do you go after the mom and pop businesses to, you know, sell to you? Or, or are you business consumer then? Well, who in the public do you go after? Um, so definitely defining the target market is is the key. Yeah. Yeah. And then after that, you know, then it's then it's discovering, okay, what are your key performance indicators, those KPIs, right? If you don't know what what is determining your success, then you're just out there blind. Mm. Right. So so it again is target market and then developing what are your performance, your key performance indicators? What what how do you know if you're being successful or not? Not just by making money, right? Yeah, there, you, you do need to have a revenue target, but what determines if this marketing or this sales campaign was a success or failure? Brilliant. And then knowing when to stop and when to go into something else is what that's going to tell you. Perfect. Brilliant. Well, Tariq, before we get into the rapid fire section, All right. <laughs> why don't you tell everyone just quickly where the best place to find Tariq is? Uh, go to my website, outsourcedsh.com. Outsource.sh. Outsourced sh.com. Outsource sales house. Sh.com. Guess what? There's a link below. Spoiler alert. Link below. Click it. Uh, Tariq, rapid fire. You ready? Let's go. What's the scariest movie you've ever seen? Child's Play. Oof. <laughs> I just yeah. saw a commercial for that and it, it brought up some scary memories. It's, it's still <laughs> coming back around. If yeah. you could be any animal, what would you be? Say it'd have to be have to be a lion the king of the jungle i don't know why they call him the king of the jungle honestly. yeah i know he lives in the the savannah but the king you know, of the jungle that's fair <laughs> okay lion dig it if you could sit next to anyone on a plane who would you sit next to i'd sit next to you mark hey it, <laughs> right here one of my questions is if you could live anywhere in the world where would you live but i mean south florida obviously right south florida is awesome if i mean i i love living down here to be honest with you but um i don't know i'd find some remote Area in Asia somewhere, you know, up on a mountain, something like that. Okay. Yeah, wherever that may be, Thailand or somewhere like that. Okay, yeah. dig it. <laughs> and Atari, last question for you. If you had 10 seconds with yourself 10 years ago, what would you say? I'd say I need to stop messing around. <laughs> um, listen to what other people are saying, you know. L l find a role model, look... And, 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 and figure out, you know, what they do and how they do it and just try to understand um, a little bit more about, you know, what it takes to be a successful person. And I, th I think, you know, that's the key, key takeaway. Just listen to other people mm. rather than think you know it all. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Tariq said it. I agree with it. Tariq, thanks, brother. Thank you. Boom. I hope you enjoyed this episode of After Hours Entrepreneur. Thank you for subscribing, and we will catch you here next time on the show. Listen, we've given you the tools. Now it's your turn. Go take the action. See you soon. Peace.